All right, welcome back in Live Now. I'm Austin Westfall. You most likely heard earlier this week that Apple is jumping into the AI race in a big way, announcing a slew of new software updates for a litany of their devices. I do want to get the latest on this from Fox's Susan Lee. Let's play this out. intelligence. It's personal intelligence, and it's the next big step for Apple. That's Apple CEO Tim Cook explaining Apple Intelligence, the company's plan for incorporating artificial intelligence or AI into its devices. And the introduction of powerful new Apple Intelligence features make these releases game changers. Built in a uniquely Apple way. The AI plan was buried behind other announcements at Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference Monday. It's an important move for Apple after it fell behind in Silicon Valley's AI arms race. Competitor Microsoft and chipmaker NVIDIA have at times overtaken Apple as the world's biggest company and second most valuable company. Is Apple actually going to lead in AI instead of follow? Historically, Apple tends to team up with other companies, infusing its sleek designs and marketing to overcome a slow start to trends. The problem I have with Apple is that its core business with smartphones is too big to get excited about the underlying innovation with Apple. So as an investor, I'm curious to see, you know, if Apple's ever going to break up into smaller companies uh, and, and the innovation yeah. business can focus on that without the uh, fat attack. But Luke, no matter how Apple's new AI initiative is received, how AI stocks continue to perform, it's important to a lot of Americans. What will happen this week with NVIDIA, with, S with uh, Apple, and with AI writ large will matter a lot to all of our 401ks. Bringing more AI into the iPhone will likely raise privacy issues, but Apple continues to assure its customers that it can be trusted. In New York, Susan Lee, Fox Business. All right, thank you, Susan, for that story. So there's a lot to touch on on this. As I mentioned before the commercial break, we're not only talking about the tech here, but talking about some of the marketing angles to this as well. We also got a little bit of insight this week into the future of marketing and how ads will be served to you in an ever-increasing AI-driven world. That's because Apple is providing marketers and CX professionals with tools to engage customers in new ways. What ways, though, you might ask? Let's ask Tom Lavecchia. He's the founder of X Factor Digital Marketing. As always, Tom, it's good to see you. Thanks for coming on. This is an interesting one to me, ads are becoming a bigger and bigger part of our lives and uh, part of our devices, it seems, as uh, time goes on here. Uh, I think most of us are familiar with the idea of targeted advertising already. Companies have been using customer data like browsing behavior for a while now, but how does AI take this concept to the next level? Well, thanks for having me back, Austin. And where it takes it to the next level and the key word on the slide you just showed is intuitive. And I'll give you a crazy example recently with Amazon. There was happened to be a female who was ordering a lot of a lot more snacks than normal. She ordered a dress, it was smaller. She returned it for a bigger one. A week later, she started getting ads for pregnancy. Sure enough, she found out she was pregnant from Amazon prior to her getting tested on her own. So right off the bat, advertisers and marketers are using this intuitive technology, but Apple's personal context will take it to the next level. And I know you're a marketing guy, not, not a tech guy, but if I may ask, how exactly does it pick up on those patterns? What's the mechanics behind it? Yeah, so the idea is personal context. So when you write emails, even now with Google, you write a whole bunch of emails, and all of a sudden you start getting ads because they comb your Gmail. Your Gmail is by no far free. They're getting a ton of data and selling it to marketers like us, or at least giving us access to the platform. Where this is going to differ than in the past is, again, it's going to be intuitive, and they're going to know you. They're going to know you're by what you're punching in on search engines, what you're going to be speaking in your personal voice, um, which raises privacy concerns. Um, they're going to be looking at every email that you send, even more so than you do, and where you're browsing, what sites and what products and what services. And with geofencing technology integrated, where you hang out as well. So this is going to be very intrusive. So privacy is going to be a concern, but for marketers, I mean, we're pretty happy about it. Yeah, uh, you talk about the privacy stuff. Uh, what what are companies like Apple and Google doing to keep customer data secure? Have they given us any idea? Well, you can opt out on your Apple device now. It's pretty easy. You go to privacy settings. You hit a button. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, and even the standard privacy. So one of the challenges about a mm, year ago or so, Apple has been blinding 
their data to certain marketing, like for example, Google Analytics and so forth. So it's been really difficult for, for us marketers to try to you know, pierce that veil. So from a privacy standpoint, Apple's has a protocol in place. In this particular case, they're partnering up with ChatGPT, which is an open AI source platform. And we're not sure how that's going to integrate because two things, one, Apple owns and controls a platform. But two, for the marketing angle, how secure is OpenAI going to be? I doubt they're going to have the same protocols as Apple, and that raises a, a cause for concern. Yeah, so what, what's the big upside for the consumer here? Obviously, marketers are getting some new tools. What's the big upside for the people like me who are perhaps buying stuff online? Okay, so you want to get a gift for your significant other, or tomorrow's Father's Day, and my wife wants to get a gift for me. She can go ahead and plan not only today's Father's Day, but the next Father's Day or the next three years out, get the get the websites lined up. Maybe I'm a cigar guy. Get the cigar of the year for Tom delivered to me by Father's Day on that Saturday, and use this credit card ending in seven zero six five. But the best part is, in the beginning, you'll be prompting as such. After a while, AI is going to prompt for you and say, "Hey, Austin." Is, if, is this the gift you want to get for your significant other? And it's going to use data to support that. So uh, Apple obviously has been the focus this week, but this AI-driven, context-driven marketing, this isn't exactly brand new, is it? Correct. It's not. So, so basically, the last maybe two or three years, AI has been a robust marketing tool taking over a lot of the human functions in advertising and marketing. So for example, I do not know the last time I wrote a, I wrote copy myself. Yeah, yeah, thank you. ChatGPT, I'll use Meta AI, I'll use Gemini with Google in a kind of a third place. So basically to writing copy, writing emails and important stuff, that's written for us. So that's been done already. The context and behind it and using the idea of natural language, they call it, um, has been honed. The data is there. So pretty much if you've been using AI currently, it's nothing new for writing, it's nothing new for ideas, and it's nothing new for implementation, especially for marketers. Where it's gonna help the end user is just make your life a lot easier versus a concept that uh, Apple Intelligence is calling personal content. So I've read that Apple's new software will be able to use health and wellness insights yes. in order to provide data for personalized wellness programs as well as product recommendations. What health and wellness insight are we talking about here? I know the Apple Watch, for example, tracks a lot of stuff from sleep cycle, yeah. heart rate, et cetera. Is it tapping into that type of information? It, it is and it will. And it can extrapolate, for example, even like your blood pressure, your blood pressure beats per minute, uh, maybe like you're in your 40s and you're having a regular heart rate that might put you at higher risk of, let's say, an MI or heart attack. Um, you know, obviously it may not have your weight, but it, you can punch in your weight at one point and then they could extrapolate how much you probably weigh based off of your caloric intake as well as your uh, activity. So it's really going to be a kind of a real-time doctor in many cases. And as the as the technology gets more sophisticated, it actually may help you prevent diabetes and certain kind of longer-term ailments. Is this AI marketing uh, renaissance, if you will, a, a dream for people like yourself? It is because we waste a lot of time and money rendering ads and spend and even effort on content on places that just people do not want to see it. I want to get to the right customer, the right place at the right time. And that's what this A artificial or Apple intelligence, which they're going to kind of take over the name, uh, that's where they come in. So what are you looking for next? Uh, what are you going to be following? What are the threads you're looking for? What announcements are you looking for? What excites you about this? Well, what excites me the most is, and, and this is good for Apple, not great for a lot of us iPhone users, 90% of iPhone users are, are less than have uh, i14 or down, right? You have to be on iPhone 15 and up, either Pro or Pro Max, and eventually the 16 when it comes out in September. So 90% out there are not gonna have access to this until they upgrade. Again, from right now, from a marketer standpoint, you're gonna have a whole bunch of people upgrading people that are into technology, into the more cutting, jet, cutting edge stuff. And then the marketers that get it right through AI and through these different platforms and really content generation too, because when you write a chat GPT piece, it's gonna scan the world wide web, right? 
and it's going to stand reputable news sources like Fox and so forth. The goal is if you can get on Fox, or if you can be in these periodicals, you're going to have a leg up over your competition. So not only is this a boon for uh, marketers, but it's also a boon for public relations professionals as well. All right, Tom, we'll leave it there for now. Interesting stuff. We'll be checking in soon. Take care. Have a good rest of your weekend. Great seeing you, Austin. Thanks for having me. All right. Let's step away for a quick two-minute commercial break. We'll be right back.